Hi. I'm back now. Thanks for waiting. And to all y'all who commented something along the lines of, you can take all the time you need to make this guide, I bet you're kicking yourself right now, because I took that literally. Anyways, bilge is the only role in the game where every second matters. Being quick with your repairs, buckets, and knowing when to call flex down is the difference between winning and sinking. This guide will give you the tools needed to become familiar with the bilge role as a beginner, and then go more in depth on how to actually bilge when you're fighting good crews and are under tons of pressure. So after a long wait, here's part 4 of my 4 part series on the different roles of a ship. This one being the bilge. So here's how I'm going to format this guide. It's going to be in two parts, beginner and advanced. The beginner part is going to focus on the simplest of things, like great bucketing, sword hopping between repairs, and what your job is. The advanced part will be focusing on different build strategies based on your team's playstyle, how to hold under immense pressure, when you have borders, and when you should call flex down based on the situation. I'll start with beginner. Now before you even start bucketing and repairing, you're going to be shooting the cannons, at least for a little bit. During your time on cannons, you should be either shooting firebombs or lower decks into the enemy boat. Reason being, your job as bilge, as it pertains to the cannons, is to make the other bilge go down before you have to go down. Sending firebombs or hitting lowers is the best way to do that. Now let's move on to what to do once you take a hole and have to go downstairs to bilge. I'm sure a lot of you already know what great bucketing is, but for those who don't, let me explain. Great bucketing is where, instead of running all the way to the top deck of a galleon to throw out the water, you simply bucket water through the grate located above the map table. Doing this effectively is extremely important to being a good bilge. Now fortunately, great bucketing is very forgiving, and you don't have to be pixel perfect unless you're in a storm or triple sailing. One of the best ways to great bucket is to throw water as deep into the corner as possible. And while it's not the end of the world if you throw more towards the middle, if you're triple sailing or in a storm, this could cause you to backsplash. The more important thing to work on is bucketing as quickly as possible. The bucket has a scoop animation that lasts for about one second, meaning it takes one second to grab the water and one second to throw it out. Because of this, you need to make sure that you are minimizing your time spent where you're not scooping or throwing. Take this example where I have four tier three holes. If you're efficient at bucketing, you can easily out bucket this water with no danger of seeking. But if you're slow or aren't bucketing effectively, the water will easily overrun you and you will sink. As you can see, being able to bucket in the most efficient way possible will allow you to survive and hold a lot more holes than if you can't bucket effectively. There's four steps to bucketing like a pro. The first thing to know is that you don't need to be head deep in the water in order to take a bucket. Only your feet need to be touching the water and you'll still grab the water. So step one is don't go down further than needed to take the bucket. Step two is jumping from stairs to map table. This is where most beginners fail because they're not used to how high they can jump, so they'll bump their feet on the ledge and fall down. Step three is throwing the bucket as far into the corner as possible. You can bucket either left or right, they both work just fine. And if you're going to be an experienced bilge, you have to be able to throw right and left consistently so practice it. Step four is jumping from map table to stairs. You want to move backwards and immediately jump, therefore bonking your head on the roof. This will propel you downward and you'll get to stairs just a little bit faster than if you were to walk straight backwards. In order to practice all four steps, get on a galleon with a friend, sail to a fort, have your friend put in four tier three holes into your boat, and practice the four steps having your friend standing mid-deck to help bucket in case you fail. If the water is beating you and you're hitting mid-deck, then you're messing up in at least one of the four parts. 
Essentially, step one and two should be completed while the bucket is still in its scooping animation. You should reach the map table before the bucket completes its scoop animation. And three and four should be completed when the bucket is in its throwing animation. Your feet should be touching the stairs before the throwing animation has completed. As long as you're beating the one second animation on step one and two and three and four, then you'll easily be able to outbucket four tier threes. Also, in case you didn't already know, the bilge needs to have a sword. Reason being, when the bottom deck is full of water, it's much faster to sword hop through the water to get where you need to go, instead of having to run through it without a sword. So if you're going to be the bilge, you have to have a sword. No excuses. Piggybacking off that, because you have a sword, you have a neat trick you can do that will allow you to repair holes slightly faster. You essentially repair a hole, and instead of walking to the next one, you do a quick sword hop and get there a split second faster. The series of inputs to sword hop between holes is this. Repair the hole, pull out your sword, sword hop, pull out wood, and repeat. In case you haven't done so already, you need to have plank and bucket bound to something, so you can instantly pull it out without going through the radial wheel. This is a requirement if you're going to be the bilge. Next thing to talk about is positioning. If you've bilged for any length of time, you've probably gotten knocked off a hole and went flying backwards. Then you had to run back to the hole in order to repair it. One little thing that will limit the knockback and can even prevent you from being knocked off the hole in the first place is to stand in front of an object whenever you're repairing a hole. Make sure you stand in front of the brig, wood beams, or barrels as you're repairing the holes. Doing so will limit the knockback and will avoid sending you to Narnia with every cannonball and blender bomb. Now if you fight good crews, it's going to be impossible for you to solo bucket and repair in all situations so you need to know when to call flex down to help you bucket water. Now you don't want to call flex down unnecessarily, because if you call him down, he's now stuck on buckets and repairs, meaning that he cannot shoot cannons, go for boards, kill boarders, res teammates, catch masts, repair wheel, and a whole list of other things simply because he's stuck down here with you. So make sure you only call him down for a good reason. Now the big question, how do I know when to call flex down? I'm glad I asked. As a beginner bilge, all I want you to focus on is calling flex down when you are in danger of hitting mid deck. Cause if you hit mid deck, you're probably gonna sink. So if you're bucketing and you realize that the water is beating you and slowly rising up, you definitely need to call flex down to come bucket with you so you can bring the water level down. And if you're down below deck repairing the boat and suddenly three more holes pop up and you won't be able to get back to the grate to bucket in time, call flex down to save the boat from sinking. Also, whenever you and flex are both bucketing, make sure you're bucketing correctly. I explained it really well in my flex video so I'll just play an excerpt from it right here. Now there might be some stressful situations where you'll need both you and Bilge to be bucketing at the same time in order to keep up with the amount of water flooding into the boat. It is critical that when this happens, you and Bilge throw from opposite sides of the grate, one he throws left and one he throws right. That way there's no chance of backsplashing. It's also important to remember to not hog the middle of the map table and be as far to the side as possible to avoid an accidental backsplash. As you can see, it's important that you don't hog the middle of the map table and stay on your side when bucketing. Once the water is below this barrel on a galleon, it's usually safe to go down and get some repairs. Another tip for beginners is to not go down below deck with water in your bucket. You want to keep this bucket open for emergencies, hence why people call it the emergency bucket. As the name implies, you keep this bucket empty for emergencies. Some of those emergency situations are if your flex backsplashes multiple times. You can save the boat from hitting mid by grabbing your bucket. Or if you're repairing holes at the front of the boat, then suddenly the enemy crew pops three tier threes into the boat 
having that extra bucket while you run back to stairs to bail can be the difference between floating and sinking. The only time you need to have a bucket with you if you're going down below deck to repair is if you only have enough time to patch one hole then you immediately need to go back up. In that case, it's completely fine to take a bucket down with you. But usually, you want to keep that bucket empty for emergencies, because the tides of the fight can change extremely quickly. Also, this is where you want to get into the habit of figuring out how many holes you have on your boat. Since you know that a good flex can hold four tier threes, it's imperative that you realize how many holes are in your boat. This way, you'll know if you need to stop repairs and help flex bucket for a little bit, or whether you can stay down below deck and continue patching. Sometimes if the water level is above your head, it can get a little scary and you think you're about to sink. But as long as you only have four tier three holes or less, then you know it's holdable, and you won't have to worry about water level because worst comes to worst, you should have your emergency bucket ready to go, just in case. In this example, I'm the flex holding for my bilge. Even though I'm barely bucketing fast enough to hold mid, and the water level is above my bilge's head, she continues repairing because she knows I can solo hold it. If she was a bad bilge, she would have come back up and double bucketed with me, meaning that the holes would not be getting repaired because we would both be busy bucketing and the enemy crew would have opened up a total of 6 or even 7 tier 3s and we would have been stuck double bucketing forever. You should always prioritize repairing over bucketing whenever possible, because when you repair, you are permanently stopping the water from flooding into the boat, whereas bucketing is only a temporary solution. Now that's all for the beginner side of things. That's all the bare minimum broad spectrum things that you need to do in order to be a decent bilge. But if you already knew that stuff, or you don't care, or you just want to pad by runtime, then here's where we get into the nitty gritty advanced level things. Now as I go into the advanced section of this video, all scenarios I present are going to be assuming that you're fighting a really good crew in Hourglass that consistently pumps lowers. Obviously, if they're only hitting one lower every 7 seconds, the fight's easy, so it doesn't matter. Firstly, forget what I said about bilge only calling flex down when you're about to hit mid-deck. That doesn't really apply anymore. The thing with bilging at a higher level is what you do as bilge really depends on how good the crew you're fighting is. If you've watched any amount of competitive Sea of Thieves or just sweaty hourglass fights, you'll realize that when two really good crews duke it out, after like two minutes of a mid-range broad, flex and build are down below deck for the rest of the game. The reason why is because good crews who have more than 20,000 hours combined are really good at hitting lowers from far away and they will always be able to put in holes faster than you can repair them. As you know, there can be a total of 8 holes on one side of a galleon. One in the front, one in the back, and six on the side. Since you can only out bucket 4 tier 3s as one person, if you have 8 tier 3s, then you and Flex will be stuck holding pretty much forever. It is critical that you avoid over bucketing and you call Flex down when wanted rather than needed. This way you can try to avoid getting 8 tier 3s and forcing flex down to bucket for the rest of the game. So the question becomes, when should you call flex down and when should you just solo build your life away? The answer is broken up into two parts, how many holes you have and how much water you have. Now different bilges have different strategies. Some bilges will call flex down really early. Some will call flex down when they're about to hit mid. So believe me, what I'm about to say is not the end all be all of strategies. But here are the guidelines you'll probably want to follow when it comes to calling flex down to help you bucket. So here's a common situation that will occur. You're bucketing your boat and you've been keeping up with the holes so far, but the water level is steadily rising and is now halfway full. You have wood crates down below deck, so you don't need to go up to replank. Given this situation, should you call flex down to bucket so you can keep repairing, or should you bucket it yourself and continue solo bilging, leaving flex up to shoot the cannons? 
Personally, here's how I would make the call. If I have two tier threes or less, then I will bucket the water myself. If, while I'm bucketing, I can hear the enemy team pumping more lowers into my boat, I will immediately call flex down so I can go repair while he holds. Now if I have three tier threes or more, then I'll call flex down to take a couple buckets while I continue repairs. If while I'm repairing, the enemy team now opens up more holes and the water is past holdable, I'll go up with my flex and bucket the water down. The thing to keep in mind is that while yes, you could go up and bucket out the water yourself if there's only three tier threes, then go back down below to repair a hole or two, you run the risk of the enemy crew pumping more holes into your boat while you're still stuck bucketing. And if you already have three tier threes, then the enemy crew opens up three brand new holes. Now you have six tier threes. So now you have to call flex down anyway, and you're going to be stuck in a situation where you only have enough time to get one patch before having to go back up and continue bailing. It should come as no surprise that, in an ideal world, you should be going down below deck and repairing all the holes in one fell swoop, then bucketing out the water all in one go. What you don't want to have happen is all your holes are opened up, and now you're stuck only having enough time to go for one repair before having to go back up and continue bailing. You don't ever want the boat to be so full of holes that you need to have both you and flex bucketing for long periods of time. So make sure to call flex down to assist you if the water level is too high and you have three tier threes or more. If you don't call him down and instead try to ego build solo, then you run the risk of the enemy crew pumping in more damage than you can out bucket solo and having to call flex down anyway. But now, since you called him down way too late, he has to stay down with you for a lot longer than if you called him down before all this happened. It's more consistent to play a safe style of bilging. You shouldn't always be riding mid-deck with every flex call. Since one backsplash could sink you with risk like this, it's generally not worth it. However, sometimes it is important to ego bilge and solo hold three or even four tier threes without calling for flex. You would usually only want to do this when the other ship is close range and or your team has killed one of them top deck. In this instance, calling flex down would leave one less person on your crew shooting cannons and sending snipes, which could cause the other crew to relieve some of their pressure and prevent your team from completing the sink. That's just one example where you might want to solo bilge for a while. That way your team can finish the kill. But bilging is very nuanced with a lot of gray area. Bilging is not a flow chart in the same way like flex, MC, or helm is. It's very situational on whether you should call flex down early or at all. And there is no one right way to bilge at the top level. However, like I've said, it's usually better to play a safer style of bilge and avoid always playing risky where you're riding mid the entire time. Also, if you're calling flex down, try to keep at least one hole open near the stairs. This way, when the water level gets lower, flex can grab a patch real quick, then continue bucketing. Make sure you're vocal in telling your flex when he should go for a repair. Your flex can't see how many holes you have at the front of the ship, so he might be slow to grab a patch because his first goal is to bucket the water. So as you're bilging, if you know your flex will have time to grab a repair, make sure you communicate and tell him to do so. Now good flexes will always look for opportunities to repair, and you probably don't need to tell them to go for one. But most people are not good flexes. So make sure you're being vocal about what you want him to do. Remember, the faster the holes get patched, the sooner the water level goes down. So always prioritize repairs over buckets whenever possible. And communicate to your flex when you want him to go for a repair. Now that I've talked about calling flex down and when you should do so, let's talk about which holes you should repair first. 
there's lots of debate on whether you should repair a tier 2 or tier 3 hole first, and I've solved it. I spent some time researching a ton about how fast water enters a ship based on the severity of holes. So I'm going to give you some numbers and the math I used to get here, and then I'll break down what you actually need to take away from this. Now I'm going to pretend that the bottom deck of a galleon could hold 5 liters of water. And since it takes about 5 buckets to empty out the bottom deck, 1 bucket equals 1 liter of water. It takes 4 seconds to repair a tier 2, and 6 seconds to repair a tier 3. A tier 2 takes 16 seconds to produce enough water to fill up one full bucket, and a tier 3 takes about 9.2 seconds. There is some debate on whether you should repair a tier 2 or tier 3 hole first. Purely from a mathematical standpoint, since it takes 16 seconds for a tier 2 to fill up 1 liter of water, that means it fills up at a rate of about 63 milliliters a second. And since it takes 9.2 seconds for a tier 3 to fill up 1 liter of water, it fills up at a rate of about 109 milliliters a second. In order to find out which hole to repair first, here's the math we use. If we repair the tier 2 hole first, then we need to do 63 milliliters times 4 equals 252, and 109 milliliters times 4 equals 436. 252 plus 436 equals 688 milliliters. This number tells us that during the time we spent repairing for those four seconds, 688 milliliters have come into the boat. Then we simply multiply 109 milliliters times 6, which equals 654. This number represents how much water has come into the boat while we were repairing the tier 3. By adding 688 to 654, we get a total of 1,342 milliliters of water has come into the boat when we repair the tier 2, then the tier 3. Now let's go the other way. If we repair the tier 3 hole first, we need to do 109 milliliters times 6 which equals 654, and 63 milliliters times 6 equals 378. Adding 654 to 378 equals 1,032 milliliters of water has come into the boat while we were repairing the tier 3 hole. Then we simply multiply 63 milliliters times 4, which equals 252. Adding 252 to 1,032 equals 1,284 milliliters of water that has come into the boat if we repair the tier 3, then the tier 2. So as you can clearly see, since 1,342 milliliters of water came in when we repaired the tier 2 first, and only 1,284 milliliters of water came in when we repaired the tier 3 first, that's a difference of 58 milliliters. Meaning that mathematically, it is better to repair the tier 3 first over a tier 2, as this will cause your boat to fill up with less water over time. Now as you can tell, I didn't put the fact that you have to move between holes in order to repair them. But since it'll take the same amount of time to move between the holes, whether you have a tier 2 or a tier 3, it doesn't matter for proving which one is better to repair first. And some of the math has been rounded up or down for ease of communication. But the proof still remains, and the lack of decimal point certainty is negligible in this case. So again, that was a lot of numbers. All you have to know is that it is better to repair a level 3 over a level 2 hole. That's it. Now obviously, this won't always be the case. If you and Flex are both double bucketing with 8 tier 3s and 1 tier 2, then you don't have 6 seconds to spend repairing the hole then you have to repair the level 2. But when given a choice, always repair the level 3 first. Now that you know whether you should repair a tier 3 or tier 2 hole first, let's talk about whether you should repair back to front or front to back. Now there is heavy debate on this topic as well, but I'll give my two cents. When you're fighting good crews, the front and middle holes get open the most often, 
and back holes are open much less frequently compared to front and mid. Keeping that in mind, along with the fact that in Hourglass you have a wood crate down below with you for quick refills, it doesn't matter whether you go back to front or front to back. Now if you're playing in a competitive league like Legacy Brawl Hub or League of Thieves where storage crates are not allowed, then I think it's slightly better to repair front to back. This way, you get the holes furthest away from the wood barrel patched first. Now once you've used all five planks, your bottom deck is probably at least 70% full. And since you worked your way from front to back, you should be super close to the stairs, allowing you to replank and great bucket just a bit faster than if you were all the way at the front of the ship and had to sword hop all the way back. But like I said, there is heavy debate on the topic and it probably doesn't even matter. Just repair the tier 3 holes first like I said and you'll be fine. Now as the fight progresses and you're calling flex down because you're hurting downstairs, you're probably going to have some border pressure. Now if there's only one border in the water, your MC and Helm should be able to handle that. So you can keep flex down with you. Now if they send three or even four people to try and board you, then unless you absolutely need to have flex double bucketing with you, you have to hold the water by yourself and let flex go up to deal with the borders. If those borders make it on, it's usually over. So if you're down below repairing, you need to sprint back to great and tell Flex to go up while you keep the boat afloat solo. Now sometimes you'll have to let Flex go up to defend the boat even when you have 5 tier 3s or more, past holdable. Maybe your helm or MC died, so he has to go up to assist with border defense. It happens. So if this situation does occur where the water is coming in faster than you could bucket, just hold for as long as possible. And before the water is about to hit mid, tell someone to catch mid. That way they'll quickly take a scoop at stairs while still being able to defend the border. Here's a situation where this happened to us. The water was coming in faster than I could hold. So right before we hit mid and sank, I told my team to catch mid and keep us afloat. On top. Let's get this stuff off the grate. One's dead. Get this stuff off the grate, please. Yeah. Catch mid, catch mid, catch mid, catch mid, catch mid. Alright, you're good. Now I know I only said what to do if one, three, or four people are boarding. What happens when two people come to board? This is kind of a gray area. Some teams are really good at TDM, and therefore two boarders are not a problem for Helm and MC to handle. But on some teams, their Helm and or MC are really bad at TDM, and can't guard ladders effectively against good players. So if your crew falls into the ladder of the two teams, then tell Flex to go up and try to kill one of the boarders so he can come back down. But if your team is skilled enough that they can guard ladders pretty consistently, then keep Flex down with you and hurry up on the repairs. Because if those boarders do make it on, it doesn't matter whether it's one guy or four, you have to tell Flex to go up and help kill them. Obviously, if you have eight tier threes, then Flex can't go up because you'll sink immediately. But besides that, you have to make sure that you're double repping with flex while those borders are still in the water. That way if they do make it on, flex can immediately go up and help fight them while you stay in solo bucket. Here's an example where even though we were hurting, I told flex to go up and try to kill the border while I held buckets for a couple seconds. Finally right, he's on. We finally on. I'm dead, what? What is it? You can go up. You can go up. I hope. You go up. I hope. For a second. Easy. Okay. Easy. Remember, if the borders make it on and stay alive, you sink. So you have to make that quick call to tell Flex to go up before the borders kill Helm and MC and start putting things on great. Bilging when fighting really good crews is insanely difficult when you're first starting out. You get so many holes so quickly, and you can be under immense pressure very fast. But the thing to keep in mind is that while you are under a lot of pressure, as long as you have a good crew, then the enemy team will also be under a lot of pressure. So it's up to you to keep your cool and keep up with repairs for as long as possible. One tip to remember about builds that isn't talked about too much 
is that when you're bucketing, if you have the opportunity to put out some fire, you should do so. As you already know, you can bucket water through the grate, but you can also put out fire by bucketing through the grate. The obvious one is middle mast. So as you're bailing, if you see that mid mast is on fire, quickly put it out. But you can also put out fire that's on the wheel, the stairs, some on cannon line, and obviously the fire that's on mid deck. Always look for opportunities to put out the fire so you can limit it from going out of control. Another tip that involves fire, no matter how good you are, you are eventually going to have boarders that are standing on grates and putting crates on the grate to prevent you from being able to bucket effectively. All you have to do is throw a firebomb and instead of grate bucketing where there's things blocking you, simply stand in the fire, move away from the fire, douse yourself with water, and repeat. This will allow you to still bucket water at max speed without needing to use the grate to do so. And this is essential for you to do if someone has boarded your ship and has put things on the grate. If you don't use the fire strat and you try to bucket normally, then you will backsplash and sink. This is a strategy that is often overlooked even with great players. They know it exists, but they just forget about it in the heat of the moment. Now in terms of what to do once the border is actually on your ship, as I've already established, you as build should set flex up whenever possible to help with the border, and you need to communicate to your team when to catch mid, but you also need to be shooting the enemy crew whenever possible. There is some debate on whether you should have a sniper or blunderbuss as your secondary weapon. However, I will always go blunder when I'm the bilge. Reason being, when I'm down below bucketing, if the enemy team tries to push me, they're going to be in a close range duel. Plain and simple. And since I as bilge don't have time to be sniping, reloading, then sniping again because I have to bucket, I find it more consistent to go for a one blunder instant kill than a sniper shot that only does 70 damage. But you can do whatever you want. Another little tip with bilging is if you only have one hole in your ship, you don't always have to repair it. Let's take a situation where you have won the broad and your helm called for a double board. Since your flex and MC are off the boat, it's usually better to just leave that hole open, that way you can continue cannon pressure on the enemy crew. If you're not shooting top decks to try and kill the ladder guarders, then your flex and MC boarding are going to have a much harder time making it on. So in that type of situation, where the enemy crew is hurting way more than you are, you can leave a hole open. Now this game can be pretty bad sometimes, and it will give you a hole on the opposite side of the broad randomly. When this happens, make sure you prioritize repairing this hole first. The reason why you repair it first is because there is literally zero chance that you can get knocked off this hole, and it has a much lower chance of getting opened back up. Whereas repairing holes on the side broad is on, you could get knocked off that repair. Speaking about getting knocked off repairs, when you fight good crews, they're going to be calling out where bilge is. So if you're repairing holes at the front of your boat and you get hit off a repair, the enemy crew is going to call them bilge's front. And once a good crew knows where you are, they're going to be pummeling that specific spot with cannonballs to try and knock you off repairs and make your life that much harder. So generally speaking, good bilges will always try to reposition after getting knocked off a hole twice in a row. This way they're less likely to be knocked off the repair a third time and can hopefully get a patch on the next hole. And I explained it really well in my flex video, so I'll quickly play an excerpt from it so you can understand what's happening and why you need to move after you've gotten hit off the hole. And when you're hitting lower decks, you want to find the bilge and prevent him from being able to repair the holes. In order to find the bilge, you want to keep hitting lower decks. And when you get a hit marker, or an X as I like to call them, you need to call out where the bilge is. So if you shoot the front of their boat and you get an X, then make the call out, bilge is front. The reason you're doing this is because when you get an X, you're hitting the bilge off his repair. And when you hit him off the hole, it makes his life so much more difficult because the water is coming in at the same speed since he's not able to repair anything. So as you can see, it's imperative that you reposition after getting knocked off a hole once or twice. 
because if you decide to stay, you're just going to get knocked off again and again when you fight good crews and never be able to repair. And that was all the advanced bilging tactics I could think of that are important to know in order to be a good bilge on a galleon. Now bilging as it pertains to brig and sloop isn't anything special compared to galleon. The only thing you need to know on a brig is that you can throw the water out of the boat without actually going above deck to do so. Standing somewhere right next to stairs and throwing around this spot will allow you to bail the water out of the boat without having to expose yourself top deck and risk getting wood bulb. You should also know that when you're repairing holes on a sloop or brigantine, there are some holes that will pretty much always be open and are always getting hit. It's the holes directly in the middle of the ship right under cannon line. So if you have to choose between repairing one of those middle holes or repairing anything else, repair the anything else holes. This way you're less likely to get knocked off the repair and, since the enemy crew is just going to reopen the middle holes instantly anyway, better to just leave those holes open and don't even bother repairing them, unless you literally have nothing else to do. As for bucketing on a sloop, it's debated whether you should bucket on stairs or through the window. Now personally, I bucket stairs or window, just depending on how I'm feeling at the time. The advantage for bucketing stairs is that you can easily see how good angle is on the enemy boat. So you know when you have to go up to return wheel or adjust sails in order to fix the angle. However, the main disadvantage for bucketing stairs is that the enemy crew can easily one ball you if you're not careful with your timing. Since you can't always see the cannonball as you come up, you could get bagged and put your team in a bad situation. Just make sure you listen for the cannonball being shot, and if you can't immediately see it, then just wait a second before going up to completely avoid the risk of getting one balled. Or like I said, just bucket through the window. It's not that serious. But back to galleons. When you fight good crews, as long as your main cannon and helm are good at the game, they're going to be putting in the same amount of damage as the enemy crew is putting into you. So there's going to be two wars of attrition taking place. One top deck and one bottom deck war. Your goal with bottom deck is to make sure you stay on top of the holes and don't let your ship get overrun with water that you need to have main cannon come down to help you bucket. If that does happen where main cannon needs to bucket with you, then you now have one less person shooting cannons meaning that over time, the enemy crew will be able to put more damage onto you than you are onto them. It's important that you practice bilging in high pressure situations so you can get comfortable figuring out which holes to repair and when to call flex down. It can get stressful to remember what you should be doing as bilge as the fight progresses and the water level gets higher. Here's the order of events that will most likely happen and what you need to remember. Number one. Shoot lower decks or fire bombs on the enemy boat to force the other bilge to go down early. Number two, if given the option, repair tier three holes first and make sure to stand in front of something to limit the amount of knockback you take when repairing. Number three, once the water level is getting higher, quickly figure out how many holes you have and decide if you want to have flex come down to help you with water so you can continue repairing. Number four, when Flex is bucketing with you, make sure you tell him when to grab a repair and when he can go up to continue cannoning, and don't keep him down for longer than needed. Number 5. Once you get to the point where you and Flex are double bucketing constantly, get a repair on the close hole whenever you can to try and slowly beat the water level. Number 6. If the enemy crew sends boarders, you can decide whether you want Flex to go up or not. But if the enemy boarder climbs your ladder and makes it on the ship, unless you're literally going to immediately sink, send flex up. Number 7. If the boarders kill some of your teammates and they start standing slash putting things on the grate, throw a firebomb and start fire bucketing to keep the boat afloat. These 7 tips are the things to remember as the fight progresses and as you get more pressure onto your boat. Now just like all the roll videos I've done, I want to encompass everything I can about the build role, so I asked people in the community what questions they have about bilging that they would like to have answered. One question I got was, 
Since you can accidentally backsplash, is great bucketing worth it? Absolutely, 100% yes. Because even if you backsplash two times in a row, the alternative is having to run from bottom deck all the way to top deck to get one bucket of water out of the boat, then having to run all the way back down. Great bucketing is worth it. Did your YouTube account get hacked? No, it was not. There was some unedited, no thumbnailed videos that were public for a while. Those were up simply because I thought I would quit the game forever and figured I might as well make some of my unlisted videos public. How do I know if I'm backsplashing or not? You'll know if you're backsplashing if the water level suddenly fills up really fast. As you spend time bilging, you can just look at the water and see it going from 70% full to 90% full in the blink of an eye. Then you'll know you've backsplashed. Bro, don't do tutorials please. You are not a good player and your videos are full of lies that the new players will suck up and stay to it. I agree that my videos are way too generalized if you're trying to become tier 1 and get into competitive Sea of Thieves. But I think for 95% of the player base, the videos are a great tool to utilize. But I would always recommend to everyone to watch tons of tutorial videos made by different people and compare what everyone has to say and the reasoning behind it. That way you can figure out what to take away from the videos and utilize every resource at your disposal. When should I repair mid-deck holes on a galleon? I'm going to make this very simple. Repairing mid-decks is literally the last thing you should ever do on a galleon. If you're actively in a fight with someone, you should be either shooting cannons or bilging bottom deck. If the enemy crew is running away, or you're running away, then before you even start thinking about repairing mid-decks, the anchor, wheel, and all the masts should be fully repaired. Finally, if your helm says that he needs someone to turn sails into wind, then you better be the first one to start angling the sails. Once all that is done, then, and only then, are you allowed to repair middecks. And if while you're repairing middecks, the helm says, turn sails, or we're about to have shots, you better instantly stop repairing and immediately get to where you need to go. I can't stress this enough. Middecks are so unimportant that they are the last thing you should do. If you're worried about a ballast ball, repairing middecks isn't going to help you a whole lot. Because a good crew is just going to shoot your boat with cannonballs first, opening any mid-decks you just patched, and then they're going to shoot the ballast ball. Trust me, if you can be doing anything else, you should be doing that before you even think about repairing mids. How do you defend against a ballast ball? Once the ballast ball hits, you tell your team, ballast, ballast, ballast then your entire team should be running down below to help bucket. Flex and build should stay by the map table, and MC and helm should stay top deck near stairs and spam buckets to catch mid. This way, you're less likely to backsplash if all four of you were down below bucketing or all four of you were catching mid. What are some wheel or mast repairing tips? The only tip I can give you is to not stare straight at the plank when repairing. You should position yourself where you can see the enemy cannonballs. That way, if they're about to hit you, you can dodge it and avoid getting one-balled. What do you do if you're getting pushed by the border? Ideally, you would have a blunderbuss, so try and one blunder him first, but that's pretty much all you can do. If he's a bad border, he might run towards cannonball barrel and keep trying to fight you for some reason, in which case, you can just switch to your sword and kill him pretty quickly. But usually, if it's bad enough where he makes it past your helm and main cannon and is pushing you, it's usually over unless you get lucky. Will Bilging bring my dad back? I don't think so. If people are dead, they usually stay dead. There were two people who figured out how to come back to life in the beginning of the first century, but besides them, it's pretty much a one and done deal. I have been the main build for my galleon for so long. I don't remember the last time I've seen the sky. I can't make out days and nights anymore, and my only sense of direction is the island banners that pop up. My hands are always pruny, and I am in constant pain. Even holding a banana hurts. 
My doctor says I need to see more sunlight if I want to live a full life, but he doesn't understand what it means to be the bilge. I guess my question is, what is your favorite bucket skin? Right now it's the Christmas bucket, but it changes from time to time. How often should you swap between bilging and cannoning? Your first priority is bilge. If you want to play risky, you could wait for two holes to pop into your boat before going down to repair. But trust me, you shooting those five extra cannonballs are not going to be the difference maker for your team. The difference maker is you staying on top of repairs and allowing your flex to stay up top to shoot 40 cannonballs in a row. So always prioritize bilging before cannons, as this will allow your team to win more games than if you were to only go down once your boat is really hurting. Should a bilge ever go for boards? Against good crews? Probably not. Although one strategy you can employ if the other crew has their bilge and flex down bucketing and you've killed one top deck and your boat has no holes is to send a quad board with MC, flex, helm, and bilge all going for a board. There's no way that the one guy top deck can kill all four of you and you can all just stand on great and watch them sink or four man push them down below and kill them that way. But besides that, just listen to your helm. He'll tell you if he wants you to go for a board. Is it faster to X cancel the bucket animation or just bucket normally? I was actually wondering this myself. So in order to test it, I went into an adventure server and I bucketed 10 times in a row normally, then bucketed another 10 times in a row with X canceling the animation. I then put the two clips side by side to each other, seeing how long it took to scoop up the water and throw it out. From what I found, there's absolutely no difference whether you decide to X cancel or bucket normally. So to answer your question, it does not matter. If you want to X cancel because it just feels faster, go for it, but they take the same amount of time anyways, so doesn't matter. Hopefully I was able to explain a bit more in depth on what makes a good bilge and how to be effective at the role. I'm going to get back to making more tutorial videos as the days go by. For those of you wondering why there was this massive break and why the Discord no longer works, I'll give you the short rundown. I got bored of the game and was kinda done playing and there was a lot of drama in the top levels of play. I was no saint and I contributed to that drama in some ways. I didn't like that I was doing that, so I left. I gave ownership of the Discord to someone else and he gave ownership of the Discord to a guy who plays with cheaters and I believe is a cheater himself. So now they've renamed the Discord and it's now in their control. Anyways, none of that matters. I wasn't banned like some people thought. I just left the game because I was bored and so I could have more time to complete my clinicals for med school. I created a new Discord server. Link is in the description. I also want to start doing lots of VOD reviews for players. There's a channel in the Discord for VOD review submissions and I can review the VOD for free either privately or live on stream. I think that while these tutorial videos are great, they are pretty generalized and it will always be better to watch someone's actual gameplay and critique them on what to do better as this applies directly to them rather than everybody. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe if you want to see more content similar to this and like the video if you liked it. Anyways, good luck.